Hey everybody, it's Chris from Xano and I'm super excited today to walk you through our brand new debugger. Our debugger has gotten a complete facelift and we've added a ton of features to it to help you as you debug and test your APIs inside of Xano. Let's hop right in and take a look. So here we are in Xano. I have a very simple function stack here. I'll walk you through it. We are just creating a variable using this value from our input. We are then updating that variable to add a single number to it. We're then running a custom function, which if you're not familiar with custom functions is just reusable logic that we can deploy anywhere inside of our Xano workspace. And then finally, we have one more update variable to add one more to that original variable. And then we are returning that variable in our response. So when we go to run and debug and we are ready to test our API, we can choose our authentication token here and provide an input. We'll just leave that at zero. That'll work for this example. We'll go down here to the bottom and we'll click run. And so as expected, we get our successful response with the value of that variable. We can still head over to our timing details panel and get individual function timing for everything that ran during execution. But this is a little bit different than the classic experience in Xano. Previously, we would have an option here for you to enable variable details during your run, and then proceed to kind of pour through those one at a time after execution to try and follow what was happening during execution. Now we've enabled a true debugger inside of Xano, which is accessible by clicking this debug button. So when we click debug, we are presented with the new debugger. We still have the result because our function stack is still running, but this new debugger will allow us to more easily parse through each of these steps one at a time and get the exact information that we need. Our new debugger allows us to click directly on functions inside of our function stacks and jump right to the state of the function during that point of execution. So you can see as I click around here, my variables update with the new variables that are established and also the updated values. So right now our X1 variable is one because we've selected this step, but it hasn't run yet. If we go back here, it is zero because we've selected this step, but it hasn't run yet. And if we go back here, you can see that our X1 variable is not established yet. We can also hover over our variable names as the functions execute to get a quick idea of what the value is for those. We have the ability to add breakpoints to our function. So if we hover over one of our steps here, let's go ahead and add a breakpoint here and jump right back to step one. Now, when we click our continue button, you can see that our execution has stopped. Whereas if I don't have a breakpoint here and I hit continue, the whole function stack executes. As you're adding breakpoints, you have the ability to enable or disable them. So let's go ahead and add a few breakpoints here. We'll jump right back up to step one. We'll click continue. And you can see we're essentially stepping through our execution now because we have breakpoints on every step. But if I go back up to step one and go ahead and disable those breakpoints and click continue, our whole function stack executes because we've disabled those breakpoints. Those breakpoints are retained. If you want to turn those back on, you can navigate away from this page and come back to it. All of those breakpoints will be saved. If we want to remove them, we can just click the X's and they're gone. We even have the ability to step backwards in execution. So I can click this step forwards option and it toggles to step backwards. And now because I have these breakpoints established on steps one through three, I can click continue and we are stepping backwards in our execution. We've also added keyboard shortcuts to the debugger. So I can just use my left and right arrows to step backwards and forwards as I need to. As we are working with custom functions and middleware, you also have the ability to step inside of those and continue the debugging experience. So if I click continue, we'll click continue one more time. And now we've landed on our custom function. If I don't care about debugging the custom function itself, I can just continue. However, if I want to actually dive inside of that custom function, I can choose this step into option. And now we are brought right to the function stack for that custom function, and we can continue the debugging experience. When I'm all done, I can click step out and now I'm returned right back to the original API's function stack to continue debugging. If you have breakpoints inside of your custom function or middleware and you continue to debug, Xano will automatically take you to the function stack of that custom function or middleware. And we can go ahead and step out as normal. 
However, if you have those breakpoints established, but you don't care about actually diving in to that additional function stack, we can use this step over option to just skip it and continue right to the next function in our original function stack. Step over, step into, and step out all have keyboard shortcuts available as well, so you can debug even faster. The last thing I want to talk about is watches. Now, watches use custom JavaScript expressions inside of the debugger to help you view, manipulate, or calculate data as the debugger is running. Now, of course, Xano is a no-code tool, so if you hear that and you're like, oh, I don't know if I care about that, I don't know how to use JavaScript. That's totally okay. I do recommend sticking around just so you can kind of get an idea of what's possible using watches. But if you don't care, please just head over to Xano, check out the new debugger, and let us know what you think. I'm going to walk you through a couple examples of how you can utilize watches when debugging your function stacks. So in this API, we are making an external API request to dummy JSON to return some sample product data. We are then looping against those products and we are using a conditional to determine whether or not that product is an iPhone. If it is, we're adding it to a table. If it's not, we are just continuing with the next iteration of our loop. So let's head into the debugger. So you can see we have a couple of things defined already to get us started. I have a breakpoint on my conditional so I can look through each of those loop iterations one at a time. And I have two watches defined here. The first watch is on item.title. You do have the ability to just type in variable names in the watches panel and add them. Item.title is where the name of that product lives because I'm going to want to see that with each loop iteration. And then we have a JavaScript expression which checks to see if that item title includes iPhone. And this will return a true or false based on whether or not it does. So this will give me just really awesome visibility as I go through each of those iterations to check and see if there is potentially a problematic product that is behaving unexpectedly. In the previous debugging experience, we would have had to look at each one of those item objects. We'd have to look at the whole object, or we could use a debug log step to look at those in our debug log, or we could use stop and debug to go through those kind of one at a time. But using the new debugger, we can just get full visibility using watches right away. So let's go ahead and start our execution. So we've hit our first breakpoint on that conditional and we can see that item title here. And we can see that we have a true because that item title does contain the word iPhone. If we go to the next one, we have another iPhone. We go to the next one, we have a Samsung and we can see that returns false. So our watches are giving us immediate visibility into the information that we need. Now we do have a shortcut here for you. If you know that you always want to see the contents of a variable in your watches, you can just click right here and add it to a watch. So it will always be here for you. Let's go ahead and run a couple more and we can see that this is working as expected and it's giving us the information that we need to debug. So watches can be really great for just bringing easier visibility to some of the data that you need as your function stack executes. But what if we need to manipulate that data to get better visibility into what we need? Let's see what that looks like. So in this function stack, we are just querying records from a table. We are running a loop on those records. And for each of those records, we want to add a month's time to our created at field. Now, we don't care about storing a human readable date inside of our database table. We don't really need to do that, right? But if we were trying to determine if this function stack is working properly using the debugger, or maybe we are running into an issue and we want to use the debugger, it's a little bit more difficult for us to read those timestamps in milliseconds, right? If they were human readable, that would make our lives a whole lot easier. And I'm going to show you how to do that in the debugger. So let's head over to run and debug and we'll open our debugger. I want to add a breakpoint to this update variable step so I can look at it through each iteration of the loop, just like before with our products. And we'll click continue. And it seems like everything is working okay, right? But what I don't have is visibility into how those dates are being calculated. So to do that, I'm going to add a watch. This expression will take our timestamp in milliseconds and convert it into a human readable date. So I'll click add and you can see immediately we have that date right there as expected. And that of course changes as we iterate through our records. There is a ton of flexibility when using watches with the new debugger. And I would really love to hear how you utilize this. Definitely let us know down in the comments below. We really hope you love this new debugging experience inside of Xano. Please let us know what you think down in the comments below. 
You can also talk to us on the Xano community at community.xano.com or via support chat inside of Xano. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.